And next time I'm going to examine the patient's nose, I'd like to see that each nostril is allowing air to flow through. If you could just um, in turn cover each side mm -hmm. and breathe through to see that air moves through. Examine the inside lining of your nose now. Um, there are special nasal specula that you can use, or you can also just use the widest uh, ear speculum. Um, I'm going to have you tip your head back. Now, this might tickle a little bit or make you sneeze. Okay. And I'm going to try and avoid touching the sensitive nasal septum. And do the same thing on the other side. Okay. Next, I'm going to examine the oral cavity. And I'll start by using the light to take a look at the oral pharynx. Open up wide for me and say, ah, ah. Okay. He's able to depress his own tongue enough that I probably don't need the tongue depressor to see uh, well. Let me try. If you put the tongue depressor about halfway back, say, ah, ah. Okay. This would also be your opportunity to test the gag reflex on the patient if that was something that you needed to do by just touching the tongue depressor towards the oral pharynx. Okay. Um, you can also use the tongue depressor or a gloved finger to examine the entire inside of the oral mucosa. I'm going to move your tongue out of the way on either side. Okay. Get your cheeks. Lift your tongue up to the roof of your mouth for me. Okay. Now bite down. I'm like E. Okay, that's the uh, end of the session today for the head and neck exam. We're going to start with uh, just the head and scalp exam. And like most things in physical diagnosis, we start with inspection, just looking for head and facial symmetry, um, patterns of hair growth, etc. I'm going to palpate the head and the scalp um, by moving the uh, tissue the scalp tissue over the skull with my fingers. Yeah. Okay. Next, I'm going to go through the lymph nodes of the head and neck region. And you can use any pattern you like with this. Um, just check for preauricular nodes and posterior auricular nodes, moving back to the occipital area down the posterior cervical chain behind the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Okay. And coming up to the anterior cervical or tonsillar area here and checking the submandibular and submental areas. And finally down just anterior to the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Um, and finally then the supraclavicular area, just bend your chin forward a bit for me. That relaxes the muscles to hollow out the supraclavicular fossa for you a little bit. Okay, fine. And I'm going to give you a glass of water to mm -hmm. hold here. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just going to check my landmarks first here, starting with the thyroid cartilage and then coming down to feel the ring of cricoid cartilage right below it. And just below that, I think this is the isthmus of his thyroid. I'm going to have you take a, just a sip of water for me and feel if that indeed moves with. Okay, great. Now if you could put some water in your mouth and just hold it there. Um, there are a lot of different ways to examine the thyroid gland. We've picked one that's consistent with how it's presented in the textbook. And I'm going to come over laterally to the isthmus and go just behind, uh, just in front of the sternocleidomastoid muscles on either side. Let me have you swallow. Okay. Now, to get more of an uh, exam on one particular lobe, you may either move the trachea slightly out of the way, if I was going to try to examine his right lobe a little better, or pull the sternocleidomastoid muscle out of the way and do the exam the same way. Can you swallow one more time for me? Okay. There are a lot of different ways that you can hold the otoscope. Um, and all of these were presented to the students in the lecture. My personal favorite is to hold it uh, like a pencil and keep the smaller, uh, smallest two fingers of my hand uh, over the temple area just to stabilize me. my hand. It's uh, helpful to me, especially when examining a squirmy infant, but it can be helpful in adults too. I'm going to move the um, pen up and back just a little bit. 
and look my way into the ear canal. Okay. This is, um, here I have my 256 hertz tuning fork, and I'm first going to do the uh, Weber test and see whether um, his bone conduction lateralizes to, to either ear. I'm going to put this in the, right in the middle of your forehead, and can you hear this more in either ear? No. Okay. Equally well. Okay. Next, I'm going to do the RINA or uh, RINA test to compare air and bone conduction and take the base of the tuning fork and put it over his mastoid process first. Can you hear that? Yes. Okay, tell me when the sound stops. Now, can you hear that? Yes. Okay, tell me when the sound stops. Yeah. Okay. Great. And those periods of time should be roughly equal. Next, we'll move to the eye exam. And I'm going to start by having you look just right at my nose, please. Uh, I'm going to lower the lower lid so I can inspect the conjunctiva. Okay. And I'm going to turn the light up next to look for his pupillary reflexes, looking right at my nose. And I'm going to look both uh, for the direct and the consensual response here and do the same thing on the other side. Many of the techniques with the um, eye exam are things that are also often also done along with the rest of the neurologic exam. Uh, I'm going to check the motion of your eyes. And you look right at my fingers and just follow them while keeping your head still. I'm going to go in an H pattern. Keep following my fingers as they come in and just look for accommodation. Okay, relax. Very good. Um, next, uh, I'm going to do the ophthalmoscopic exam. I'm not going to dim the lights here so that you can see.